Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. On today's episode, we're gonna have a chat to a distributor about a brand new salt, and then I'm gonna do a deep dive into it, including some ICP testing to see whether it suits you and your reef tank. All right, guys, thank you for joining me on another episode of Parker's Reefs. And believe it or not, this is the final video from Reef Stock Australia. I've had so much fun at that expo and I cannot wait to do it all again at the Underwater Pet Expo in Melbourne, 15th and 16th of October. Now, to see things off from Reef Stock Australia, I thought it would be pretty nifty to do a bit of a hybrid video where I do a bit of an interview with the distributor about one of their products they're bringing into Australia. But then I bring some of that product home and do a deep dive review on it myself. Now, on today's episode, we're going to have a look at Royal Nature Salt. They do both a uh, seawater or a standard blend and a Ion Balance Pro. They're sort of pro or boosted equivalent, if you will. I got a sample of each that I'm going to do a thorough deep dive into. I've actually been using that salt now for a couple of months, so I'll give you the ICP results and my thoughts of it at the end. But first things first, let's have a chat to Gareth from Aqua Premium to let us hear about the product and find out what makes it so unique from other salts on the market. All right, I'm here with Gareth from Aqua Premium. He's gonna tell us all about the new salt on the Australian market, Royal Nature. Now, Gareth, tell us what makes Royal Nature what it is? Why should our viewers be interested in this salt? Royal Nature is an evaporated sea salt from the Red Sea, from okay. Israel. Um, so they take water pristine off the reef. Uh, they solar evaporate it. During yes. that process, all of our macro, all of our major elements drop out. Yep. Um, and in that process, as you guys know or may not know, the sodium chloride that evaporates in, in, in the step that evaporates out it carries all the trace elements and minerals yes. along with it. Then they blend everything back together yep. in a certain formulation to give you a really stable, repeatable uh, product to use in your aquarium. This is the natural salt water, uh, to mix up to your natural salt water levels. Perfect. The black bucket is your boosted levels. Sure. So higher levels of alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, potassium. Yep. Um, we've even done some ICP tests on it and it comes out really strong on point. Yeah, um, nice. Matching up with natural salt water as well. Fantastic. So we're um, talking like DKH around like seven and a half, eight, something yeah, like that. Beautiful. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That's right in the sweet yeah. spot for and, where and I like to get my reef. The boosted salt, like yep. the, the, the with your higher levels, is not really that much higher in DKH, okay. so it's not a really hot mix. Yeah, it's quite yeah. delicate. Yep. So I use this for my aquaculture customers, um, live seafood holding systems, uh, where they might not have access to natural salt water, um, or they've had rain events and they can't harvest the water. Yep. Yep. They need water. You're producing a lot of wastewater because these animals are purging heavily. Um, so it's repeatable. You get repeatable, reliable results. It's clean, yes. no contaminants. Nice. In fact, it's arguably more biosecure than the water you're pulling out of the yeah, ocean yeah, because sure. you're mixing it up with RO water and you've got complete control yep. over your parameters. Um, it's it's just an excellent salt. I use this for a lot of research systems as well. Okay. Um, biomedical research where they need that accuracy right. and purity of product. Definitely, nice. How does it go about mixing up? Is it a uh, easy to mix salt? Is there any sort of tricks to it? it mixes or? really rapidly, yep, really yep. rapidly. So um, I've got uh, like live seafood holding customers and, and customers with zebrafish systems in biomedical research yes. that are mixing this up and using it within an hour. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Um, it's, it doesn't go cloudy. Yep. Uh, obviously, you don't want to go dumping a whole heap in because you get hot spots. So yep. You know, follow your usual mixing regime. Of course. Sprinkle it in slowly with good yep. circulation and mixing with warm water up to temp and you'll be absolutely fine. Beautiful. Now this is a new product in the Australian market, but it's not a new brand? No, it's not a new brand. Been around for a long time. Um, yep. Ackle Premium identified it as a range to bring to the Australian market that had the quality that we expected yep. to bring along to our very valuable retail customers. Yep. So um, we wanted to we wanted to have something that people could get reliable and easy results out of. They didn't have to worry about it. They could. It's backed up with ICP testing. Um, it's it's just a, a really nice, reliable, really salt. reliable salt. Yeah. And price wise, is it is it competitive on the market? Very competitive. You'll find it for the, about around the same price that you will most other salts. Yep. Um, as I said, it is an evaporated sea salt, so 
it's not like others that are uh, they buy in the individual components and mix it together. Yep. yep. Um, so it's it, it's coming from a pristine source. Like you've got the solar evaporated ponds, you've got the highway, then you've got the Red Sea where they're yeah. pumping it out of. Yeah. Wow. Well. There's no the, very low carbon footprint. Yep. There's no transport of chemicals. No way moisture can get into it. Amazing. No egg contaminants can get into it. It's a very pure source yep. um, and, and mixed in a, pro a really professional facility. Yeah, fantastic. Well, it's definitely a salt that I must admit, I personally, I, I was going to say I haven't heard of it before, but the logo looks familiar, so I've obviously seen it before, but being new in Australia, I was really curious to hear more about it, and um, I appreciate the time you've taken to take us through it. People looking for this brand in Australia you should reach out to their local fish shops to get it in from Aqua Premium. They can get some deliveries in there and check it out. But um, I'll also be talking to uh, Chris and uh, Jareth soon to see if I can grab a bucket of this at some stage so I can do a nice in-depth review of it, mix it up, show you how it goes, and then see if we can send off an ICP and just see how the parameters do mix up with uh, natural salt water levels because that's exactly where I'm aiming for. And I love to see a natural, uh, an artificial salt that uh, replicates those natural levels because personally, that's where I think we need to be. Awesome. Thank you. No worries. Thanks, Sam. Thanks very much. Thank you. All right, I guess the best way to go about this is to set up a little sample here in a uh, very noisy mixing container with a uh, heater, nice little glass tank and a uh, Tunzi fixed speed pump just running away there just to keep this water warm and stirred up. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up a batch at 1.026 specific gravity using my uh, Milwaukee refractor here. I'll do a separate one for the Pro and the uh, Standard. Then what I'll do is I'll grab a sample of each with a Triton ICP test, send them off and then we can have a look at the ICP results together and just see if what's listed on the bucket matches up with what uh, what Triton says so I guess it's time to start mixing. Now I must admit this salt is a little bit coarser than some of the fully synthetic salts I've dealt with before and as you will see in a second it probably does not mix up quite as easily as some of those other salts but uh, it doesn't bother me that it doesn't turn into a, a clear liquid within seconds. It did literally within minutes and um, I would just recommend if you are going to mix this salt up that you do have decent circulation in there. You can see uh, to help get this salt moving in um, I guess seconds not minutes I did move my wave maker about just to make sure that there were no sort of dead spots in there. But within about three to four minutes the uh, salt granules had completely dissolved and um, you can't ask for much more than that in reality. All right, now that we've got the Pro Blend mixed up to 1.026, I'm gonna grab my uh, Triton vials here, fill them up, send them off, and then I'll repeat the process after I give this a good thorough washout, clean, put some new RO in there, get it up to temperature, get it stirring. I'll do the same with the Standard Blend. I've got another Triton ICP kit so we can compare both of the results side by side. We'll see which one suits you and your reef tank. But for now, I gotta fill these up. All right guys, a week has passed and the results are in. Let's jump on my computer now. We'll have a look at both the standard salt water mix and the Ion Balance Pro from Royal Nature. Have a look at their parameters and see whether it suits you and your reef tank. All right, here we are with the Triton ICP results from the Royal Nature Natural Salt Water Mix. Now I mix this up to 35 parts per thousand or 1.026 specific gravity. And uh, you will start off with the unwanted heavy metals here. You can see we got absolutely nothing at all, which is important. You don't want to have heavy metals coming into your tank via your salt mix. So we've got a row of zeros and a row of green lights there. We can quickly move on to some of the uh, more important things like macro elements. You can see here we've got one red light here, which is low in boron. Everything else with, is within range. Calcium is around that 417 mark. Magnesium is a good level. I like that around the 1350 mark, which is good. Potassium sweet. That should be around 400 and 397 is sweet. Bromide's good, strontium's good, sulfur's good. Boron's a little bit low, doesn't bother me very much because I dose boron into my tank anyway. But uh, if you don't and you have consistently low boron levels, that could be a problem. If you have consistently high boron levels, that could be seen as a, a positive. But um, I don't think it's uh, really all that deserving of the red light, but uh, so be it, it's a little bit low there. Moving on to the uh, lithium group. It's saying lithium's a little bit low. Personally, I think that's a fantastic thing because uh, more often than not, people are running a little bit high on lithium. So if you've got a salt mix that is a bit low on it, it's gonna balance that out a little bit. You've got the tiniest trace of nickel, which is great. And we're a little bit low in my opinion on the molybdenum, but uh, there is some there. So warranted at green light there. Coming on down to the I group, we can see vanadium and zinc is good. Manganese is tested as high. Personally, I think that is a good level. 
This is hit point of zero to three is a bit low in my opinion, so to see that at 10 is a good thing in my book, but uh, you would need to be mindful of it and possibly adjust your dosages of manganese if you are adding it yourself. Iodine is low, that is gonna be the case with almost every uh, salt, unless you've got huge amounts of iodine in there, it's just one of those things that comes out of it. But with my experiences of ridiculously high iodine levels in my dream reef tank, nothing puts a bigger smile on my face than seeing a low iodine value. It is still there, but it's low, which is just perfect. I wouldn't change a thing. Coming down into the uh, iron group, we can see this is basically heavy metal as well. There's uh, zeros there and green lights. Barium group, we are in a touch higher the barium, although again, if it's one of those things you want to elevate, that's going to be sweet. Beryllium is at zero happy days. Into the silicon group, and we're right in the sweet spot for silicon. And as you would expect for uh, phosphorus and phosphates, just the tiniest trace in there, which is totally fine. In fact, the phosphorus is a little bit low, which is good because you're probably going to have a little bit more of those organics in your tank. And uh, the analysis of 0.015 ppm is uh, near on zero in my book. In fact, it possibly just shows my um, RODI quality there. But uh, maybe we'll move now on to the uh, pro salt and see what makes it different. All right, now onto the uh, pro salt mix from Royal Nature and uh, starting off with the unwanted heavy metals. Again, we've got a uh, row of zeros and green lights, which is great. Onto the macro elements, we see some very similar figures there. Your mang uh, manganese being a touch higher, calcium around the same, potassium a touch higher. Um, again, we get bromine coming up as a, uh, sorry, boron coming up as a uh, yellow flag, but it's very close to the uh, set point. And um, like I said, I would recommend dosing that anyway. So things are looking quite good there. Uh, the lithium group, you're showing a little bit low on lithium, no big deal. Your nickel and molybdenum, both within the sweet spots. We still have manganese showing a little bit higher than uh, the set point, but again, that's something I recommend maybe dosing a little bit anyway, so um, I don't see that as a problem. Iodine, interestingly, is a little bit higher in the pro mix. It's up into the sweet spot, so um, that is one thing that's a little bit different. In fact, at the end, I'll uh, put both of these uh, ICPs on screen so you can have a look and see the differences. But um, moving on to the iron group, you can see we've got... Uh, some uh, unwanted heavy metals there, all of zero green lights. Barium group, we're all good there. No beryllium, a little bit of beryllium, a little bit of barium, a touch high, but um, still within uh, uh, Triton's opinion of green light worthy. Uh, silicon, we are in fact identical to the other mix. And uh, phosphorus, exactly the same at five. And uh, phosphate, exactly the same at 0.015. So I think there's very minimal difference between their natural salt mix and their uh, pro salt mix. In fact, both of them look great. I'll put them both on screen now so you can compare the two though. All right, and just for a quick final comparison, I've got the uh, natural salt water here on the left, or the natural salt water mix, I should say, and the pro mix on the right, so you can see the two. Again, we've got uh, zeros on all of the unwanted heavy metals. We come down to the macro elements for each. You can see there's a little difference here, but not very much at all. In fact, I'm just trying to get them to level up. Sodium's very similar. Calcium's almost identical. Uh, magnesium's a little bit higher on the pro, a little bit higher in potassium again. Uh, actually a touch lower on bromide, a touch higher on boron, strontium a touch lower, sulfur a little bit higher in the pro, but again, very, very similar. Uh, this must have just been on the uh, tipping point from yellow to red for Triton. Heading on down to lithium group, you can see almost identical there. In fact, very close to identical, the uh, I group. We've got uh, a little bit more iodine and the pro is the biggest difference I could see between the two salts. Um, I should also point out that I tested the DKH of both and they both came in at near on exactly nine DKH. I had 8.8 .8 and 8.9, so um, very minimal difference there. Heading into the iron group, zeros all the way, barium group there, um, you can see uh, identical into the silicons. Um, very, very similar, and the nutrient groups were uh, exactly spot on. So believe it or not, I found very little difference except for maybe a little bit more iodine being in the uh, pro mix. And um, other than that, they're very much the same mix. So I wouldn't stress over picking between the uh, pro or the uh, standard salt water mix unless you've got high iodine, and then I would go the standard salt water. 
All right, guys, there you have it. That is my introduction and then deep dive into Royal Nature Salts, both their standard seawater blend and their Ion Balance Pro. I'll let you decide whether they suit you and your reef tank. I know that they are very competitively priced on the market. So if you liked what you saw from those ICP results, reach out to your local fish shop and say, hey, I wouldn't mind trying Royal Nature Salt. I particularly like that it is a solar evaporated salt. It's a little bit of a hybrid between uh, natural salt water and then completely synthetic synthetic salt water. It's got a little bit of the both in there, which I don't know, some people will see that as a weakness. Personally, I think it's covering both bases, so it suits me just fine. And I'm happy to say that I have been running the Pro Salt on my reef tank now for the last couple of months, and I've seen no detrimental effects at all. I'm not gonna tell you that my colors and growth went through the roof. In fact, I saw no change whatsoever, which considering the price point of this salt is a very good sign indeed. And let's, well, let's be honest, it's not like my uh, dream reef tank was lacking in growth or color before. So to keep that lofty standard up is a very good sign. Anyway, guys, I will wrap the video up there. If you got any questions, comments, feedback from myself, the Royal Nature Salt, or anything else about the channel, feel free to pop it in the comments section down below. I do personally reply to each and every comment there, so it is the best way to get hold of me. If you enjoyed the video and appreciate the uh, deep dive I went into with this salt, please do give it a thumbs up. And last but not least, if you're yet to subscribe, please consider doing so. For those of you who are coming to Underwater Pet Expo, the 15th and 16th of October in Melbourne, I look forward to seeing you all there. For everyone else, I'll catch you on the next videos. Till then, stay safe, keep reefing. Cheers, bye.